Hello, Carsten. Can you hear me? And have you? Excellent. We have participants. I thought for a long time I was sat here with, uh, <laughs> with no one in no one in the interim. <laughs> So uh, we will continue to wait a few minutes to see if uh, Pascal said he would be attending. Uh, so we'll wait to see if Pascal, uh, I know Lou as well, said he would be attending. So we'll wait a little bit longer to um, for them to arrive as they're fairly key contributors to this. Hello, Carlos.
Oh, excellent. John is here as well. So uh, as ever, we will be uh, taking meeting notes in the integrated hedge doc for Meet Echo. So I'm just quickly updating. <coughs> I beg your pardon. Making those notes now. Um, we're just putting some header in there. I'm afraid I couldn't make the uh, the last meeting two weeks ago um, on the grounds that I was on vacation. Uh, so um, I'm very much catching up with uh, the outcomes from from that at the moment. We don't have much of the way of an agenda, um, mostly because I was kind of hoping that uh, Pascal and Eve would suggest an agenda as they attended from there. Um, I know Lou did not get a Lou Berger didn't get a chance to join the last meeting, and he had some comments on uh, the architecture draft. So um, I'm kind of hoping he joins fairly promptly. I did give him a nudge uh, a couple of days ago to say it's this Friday. Can you make it? And he said he was rearranging his calendar to make sure he could. So I am really hoping he does arrive. And Eve also is on vacation at the moment. So she's not going to be able to meet this meeting. Um, sorry, the UK is having a heat wave at the moment. So I shall be drinking continuously through this. Um, so can I ask, a, a, Ah, Pascal is here. Hello, Pascal. Thank you for joining. If anyone is speaking, I'm failing to hear them. But I have done my audio test. So could somebody just do a mic test for me? I, I will speak um, just to set your mind at ease that you can actually hear us. Thanks. Thank you. The audio quality is so good through WebRTC that, that I have no background hiss or crackle from anything. So I could have been talking into the void for all I knew. So I will apologize for being slightly underprepared for this because it was very much uh, a next step on from the last meeting. And what I don't want to do is to start heading into the agenda for uh, IETF 114, which I, I hope you can attend. Uh, in person, if not remote, is as ever welcome. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm just flipping through the notes from the last interim to see whether there was anything in particular that were actions to be taken at this meeting. And I can't see any immediately, but uh, Pascal and John in particular, or, or Carlos actually, if you can see that there was any actions that needed to be taken, can you jump to the mic and remind what well, tell me <laughs> because i can't see anything at the moment if nobody speaks uh, i had a to do to update the architecture um uh, which which was from the, the specific architecture meeting that we had i mean eve has, has been organizing Mm -hmm. this and so I had to do for this session to update the architecture, um, and hopefully we we would discuss it with Lou. Um, so, so the changes were mostly uh, explain how row plays with the architecture versus .NET. Sometimes row is is a superset of .NET uh, over .NET, so somewhere in the service layer, and sometimes we could imagine that row plays on the endpoint and that net in the network. So, so Ro is on the, the user side of the UNI. Uh, that, that's, for instance, what you get when you, you do Ro on your device and, and you want to optimize the radio links that you use for the access. So for instance, you've got two, three Wi-Fi, you've got a one, two, 5G, and, and you mm -hmm. know, that's the access use case. In, in that use case, Ro is really at the endpoint and the OAM is done end-to-end. And we don't we don't have visibility about what goes in the middle. That could be that net, like if you have five G network, that could be some that net there. Um, end to end, probably not, but who knows? And in that case, it's it's row and that net versus row over that net. You see? And yes. So, 
it's, it's still unclear in that net how the transport signal to the network, so that what the transport layer is and what it does to signal to the network. Uh, bang, 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 here are the packets. So this is still undefined. And I, I had a, a draft that I submitted to TSV uh, area explaining that and explaining that we need a transport. But that, that's beyond row. But row could, could be effectively um, in the in the middle of that story, not providing the transport, but being the what the transport talks to, and and then Row would speak to DeathNet over the UNI interface. Now, that much is I've not entered much details on that because all the transport discussion does not exist. It will have to come one day. Uh, but in this Row and DeathNet scenario, we probably, if you want the full story, we probably want to talk about the transport as well. So I just said you can have one next to the other, like row in device and that net in network, or even no that net in network. Or you could have row without that net, meaning that we have row function which operate in the network, um, in in the uh, the top of the service uh, subway. Can I just can I just drill into one thing you've just said there a little bit deeper, which is because I'm trying to take some notes at the same time. And can someone else please help? It's interactive hedge doc, and 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 I I'm a terrible note taker. I I can only apologise. Much to the annoyance of of all my academic tutors, I am terrible at taking notes. Um, you you said you believe that in order to make raw work successfully, we needed support from the transport area. We needed some some transport protocol support in yeah, order it, to make raw work. Really can you can expand net. that a little bit? It's really for that net. It's not really raw, right? It's, it's more generic. Well, it, the expectation in that net, and, and remember, the only document that talks about that is a personal submission, probably a 0001, which is one or two years old, with my name on it. And that's it. Right? So, so there is it's not a discussion that we could have in that net. And part of the problem is that net is uh, internet area, it's not transport. Uh, but but yeah. the point is, do, you don't want TCP over that net, do you? Because what that net will, will gonna ex is going to expect is blocks of maximum, say, a certain size, like 2K, at a certain period. And this they, they will be injected at that period across the network. And if you give that net 2K every second, I mean, I'm stu uh, that's stupid, but 2K every second, it will transport them with full guarantees. If you give that net more than 2K, what's going to happen is either the ingress discards your extra packet, re uh, put them in the network with different costs, there won't be guarantees on them, or um, or queues them. But if you if, if that net starts queuing at the ingress, then, then the latency that you don't have in the network will happen at the ingress, which defeats the purpose. Yeah. So, so where, uh, so, so your ask to the transport area is for yeah, some exactly. sort of signaling, some sort of uh, well, equivalent yes, to VCN, but, but it's not congestion. There needs to be signaling of some sort. But the first thing is, say that net is in my box, right? Yeah. I, I'm the endpoint that I have that net local. The first thing is, if I put TCP over this, right? Mm. I mean, TCP window will, even if you have, if you have the, the, the MSS correct to 2K, I mean, the TCP window will, will try to grow and, and then it will be cut by that net, or, you know, because queuing at ingresses makes no sense on that net, so it will be cut. And, and then it will reduce dramatically. And so you will, you will see that CISO, that so type of traffic. You, know, no, you, don't, you want a flat traffic, you will see a so. So, so the TCP is not what you want over that net. You want something that can effectively deliver just in time, bang, 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 blocks of 2K, regardless of what the application gives. So this really means that the transport must be time aware for one thing. It must deliver the packet to the network at a precise time. And then till that precise time, it must basically pack everything it can in those 2K, meaning mm -hmm. that it, it will have to probably get different blocks from the upper layer, like a TCP stream, but just aggregate, aggregate, aggregate what the upper layer gives until the 2K are full. And when the 2K are full, then at the precise period, give them to the network. So you see, that's not TCP, that's not UDP either. That's a very simple behavior of packing and delivering at precise time. But this transport that does exactly that does not exist. 
It's not called TCP or UDP. Or. Mm -hmm. so, so we are missing a transport which can do that. So we're missing a, a effectively a uh, almost a TDMA streaming transport protocol where you know that you can transmit X octets every right. Y milliseconds as and, a and whatever the, the application not comes in, right? You have to aggregate it, pack, 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 pack it until 2K, make that block, ready to deliver, time comes, straight sound. And okay. so time comes is when there might be a need for an interface because if that net is not in my box now, but that next is on the first hub box, I don't even I don't know when time comes. So so, so it's probably it's probably a need for a signal like a pool or something coming over the internet, the, the Ethernet. And and that's where my draft has really two sides. One is one hub, it's layer two. And it's mm -hmm. not tomorrow that you'll see it, but it's basically something like a pull from, from the switch. Give me your next 2K. And um, the other is, is everything that happens at layer four, which is repacking and, and blocking until 2K and being ready to send them. If you can't sync with the network, then at your own period as much as you can. Go on, John, you, you, you are in the queue. And Yeah, I just had a, a little question, which is, um, it, it, Pascal said that you know maybe you need a signal back from the the first detnet box to the end box to to say you know basically clear to send. It's like, it sounds almost like you're something exactly you're something like that. Yes. CPS RTS, but the the um, isn't it enough to know, um, you know what what the bit rate is and then you can you can do uh, retiming at well, the, uh, the the, the whole story is very being very very tightly time synced because the the switch basically. Um, will prepare the buffers just in time. The, the buffers are guaranteed in a short window uh, before the time to receive them and until the time to send them. And then those buffers will be allocated to a different depth flow. And the more precise you are on uh, when exactly the, the 2K arrive at the first switch, the, the, mm -hmm. the more TSN flows you can adapt in some amount of buffers. Right? I mean, I okay, hope I make sense. Yeah, so, so the pool, the pool is kind of ideal, and, and and the other thing is the two clocks will drift. We are talking about very precise times here, so so the two clocks will drift, and so I think the two times managed separately is not very good. So you really want something on the UNI to make sure the host is synchronized to to the switch, and okay, so, what, so whatever that is, and the pool is one way of doing it. So, so Pascal, could, is, isn't what you're discussing here another example of uh, within the architecture and the, and the scoping of, of RAW, and kind of it ties back to the RAW charter. So RAW is about uh, producing this reliability across wireless links. Uh, and we talk mm -hmm. about PARIO and uh, path uh, selection elements and path computation and how they interact with the path computation elements as the control plane to establish mechanisms and i know perio is a way of doing this mm -hmm. but there is also a second piece which is there are they are lower layer i'm not going they're not always layer two because the example you're using is subtly different but there are layers below uh, you know the data layer so i'm talking about uh ieee tsn uh whatever uh, etc itu are doing for 5g um Sort of, I yes, what the the actual, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there are link layer solutions which are effectively from an IP concept for one hops, and you know, DetNet is trying to uh, bind these things together so you get an end-to-end -end deterministic, uh, deterministic, um, uh, deterministic okay. path, and we are within the scope of the raw working group looking to. Uh, do that deterministic behavior over a, a, a path, including a wireless link, not just entirely made of wireless links. Isn't what you're proposing... No, I'm I not just proposing disagreed that with more. myself. No, you're, 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 you're saying that to take advantage of this, actually you need transports that, are, that will take advantage of it and not naively fail based on what DetNet and by extension RAW has laid down. So RAW can develop... Uh, control plane protocols and OAM protocols to allow us to say, actually, yes, I can give you a deterministic um, path uh, track. What do we call it? Sorry, I'm being slow yeah. today. Across the end to end. But if your transport protocol is dumb and designed for opportunistic 
transmission or you know um, unreliable transmission then it's going to do naive things tcp being the example and both you and Carsten have said tcp and it just doesn't work by the result. and i know that by experience because even mm -hmm. if before there was that net there were primary networks 25 30 years ago and uh, we at ibm did exactly what i described yeah. we, we created the first big switch which was the 2020 20, 20, 20 to 20 and it would have a CIR function committed information right. And that CIR would expect, you know, a, a maximum burst within, uh, basically CIR was the, the, the right, and, and there was maximum burst and then a period associated to that. And, okay. and the endpoint we connected to that were the classical old SNA 822.2 devices, and those were window-based. And so yep. what happened, and, and we did not have CIR function in the 3746 at the time, which means we would ju do just what naive TCP will do of, with 802.2. So it's, it's basically a window that can grow until mm -hmm. you know it shrinks back to zero or something when you have a loss, um, or shrinks back to one. So, and so the window would always shrink back to one because as soon as it grew, the switch would cut because of the CIR. Yep. And so what I'm describing is, is something I've experienced, you know, the bad way. And, and, and we produced the CIR very, very, very quickly on the transmitter, uh, making sure that we effectively uh, send what the switch can accept. Because otherwise, I mean, the traffic was drops. Boom. You know, each one you would wait until one timer or something, which was whatever, to resend mm -hmm. one packet. The, the throughput went to a few kbps. Yeah, so your your utilization of this beautifully laid down path through a combination of DetNet and by extension RAW, we'd have laid down this beautiful path, all the switch equipment along that path would be ready to to um, give you that, that deterministic um, packet rate. You then do something dumb, which means you don't take advantage of it and your utilization of that path drops to near zero. Am I yeah. correct? Did you change your mic? Your, the sound just went bizarre. No, I think I think it's just my internet. I think all the kids have come home from school and are consuming all the internet. So no, no, uh, no. It, it's just that you moved when you move your head somehow. The mic may move because when you said no, it was good, and then it was bad again. I, I should try not to move. I shall. I shall speak firmly. How does how does that sound? Sounds weird. <laughs> okay. Um. Maybe you should just turn your, your headset a little bit so the mic is a bit more to, to your mouth. How's, how's that? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, testing, testing. The first how was great and then boom, again. No, maybe I'm there trying... is a contact somewhere. How's this? Is that better or is that worse? No. I, no. I, I have soft touch buttons on my, on my headset, okay. which so I again, occasionally because we, we won't waste the time of the meeting. We can hear you, right. but it's, it's very low. Don't ask me. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I, I, I can understand you. I, I hear what Pascal is saying is that your audio is kind of getting better and worse, but it's understandable. Let's just go on. OK. So, so yes, I mean, you got my point. So the architecture does not discuss that. Should it discuss that? I don't know. It's a bigger problem. It's really that net. And the that net architecture does not discuss that either. It provides so, something, and it doesn't say what the UNI is with the endpoint. So that's why I started having this draft uh, of TSV. So what action do we need to take? What would be I your... Carsten has an idea. Go on, Carsten. Yeah, I just... Um, I have no idea about RAW. I'm, I'm just uh, dropping in as a lurker today, but... Um, Generally, if your architecture makes certain assumptions, uh, like th there is a link layer that does certain things for you, it's a pretty good idea to document that in the architecture. Um, so saying certain things we don't need to, to do here because it's done in a, in a different place, that's an important thing to do. And it's probably not requiring a, a, a page of text that can be done in a relatively simple way, in particular, if you already have a document you can point to. So, I, I, to answer that, yes, the current architecture document attempts to do that, and and most of the, I'm, I'm still waiting for Lou to turn up because he had a couple of comments around that, but the current architecture document does go through um, 
capabilities of, of uh, lower layers that can be reused in order to to provide this uh, what we call a track, but fundamentally it's it's a it's a flowed path across the uh, end to end, and also some uh, proposed ways of mitigating uh, of working around links within that path which don't have any sort of um, determinism support, so so completely non deterministic links. So I think we've got that already. What I'm hearing Pascal suggest, and, and I think he's making a lot of sense, is that RAW and DetNet as well could complete all their work and complete their charter and have fantastic control plane protocols that would allow these end-to-end -end paths to be created. But from an application perspective, there are no transports apart from, there are no general purpose transports that will take advantage of this. Right. So and the application. Have I summarized that right? Yes, the application would have to do it, you know, at the application layer and use UDP or something. Yeah. And that's probably a, a very bad idea. But in the uh, moment, the, the expectation I got from the, from DeadNet when I raised that point was that um, right now you would run DeadNet in the end system, and and so it would be DeadNet end to end from the end system. And what happens above layer three is not our business. So, so the application would basically you have to inject the right packet at the right time. So I've I've just quickly brought up in another tab the the DetNet use cases, and they're talking about uh, pro audio and video. So of course that would be packetized over UDP rather than TCP based. I'm looking at the index rather than going into the depth of it. Yeah, and because we don't have any data data smart for. grid thing. Say again, sorry. Because, yeah, because they, they, there is no better transport, right? And that mm -hmm. is kind of about putting in the network things which are normally done at the application layer as well. Um, not bonded latency because they can't, but at least adjusting the jitter, right? The jitter and elimination, elimination buffer, every application which does some, some streaming has to have them because the network will have jitter. Now, if you have a dead net network, you can eliminate that function from all applications. I mean, that's the benefit of doing it here. Now, this what we do for the jitter, we are not doing for packetization, blocking, and scheduling, basically, for, you know, whatever the application delivers. So the application still has to do it. And, and well, and, and the second thing is the, the DeadNet architecture has a UNI interface, which is not specified. We say it's, it's the architecture allows it, but right now, if the end system is part of DeadNet, then you don't have a UNI. You are already dead net. The UNI would be inside the box. And so now I'm talking about a real UNI where the endpoint would not necessarily need to have all the good features that the dead net network has, like like being in sync, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But for that, you, you need a minimum hint over the UNI for, for the transport to actually to deliver the packets at the right time. So, so yeah, but I don't okay. want to yeah, yeah, this yeah. discussion. Just keep people aware if they are not that that we have this sort of thing, which is you know, the elephant in the room. What, what data do you place on this network? So, would your proposal be to uh, have some sort of boff, non-working group forming to start with, to say, "Hey, transport area, we think there should be a a DTP." Uh, a yeah, deterministic transport I mean, protocol. It's four pages, right? <laughs> well, in theory, it's never four pages, but yes. No. Well, I tried because I wrote that draft. And I went into, you know, actually some of the functions like replication elimination could, should be considered as layer four as opposed to layer three. Because you, you, you go out and you go back in layer three and one, one packet goes in, two packets goes out, go out. It's hardly a, a layer three thing. Right. Normally, layer three, it's one packet in, one packet out, and it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so the argument can always be made that TCP, well, it's called TCP over IP. It runs over IP. So this would be DTP over IP. So right. Gonna... But, but but in the middle of the network, when you do replication or elimination, you need to queue things. Right. Elimination, you need to queue ordering. Uh, it's it, these are not layer three functions. These are layer four functions. I mean, that's mm -hmm. typically what TCP will do. Right. It will reorder the thing, etc. And, and so if you start looking at the architecture and, and you know, you, you forget, you know, of the history of that net a little bit, 
uh, you would figure that probably the architecture should have been going all the way to layer four in the service layer. Okay, so so bringing it back to the subject of the the, the raw architecture, do you think? And this is kind of a more general question rather than a question to Pascal. Do you think there is value for the working group to draw out and discuss this within the existing architecture document or some other draft to talk about this as a as a, a, I want to say problem but people think problem statement but as a, as a kind of an issues document is sure raw can do all the work it's chartered to do and we can solve all these problems in beautiful elegant ways and everyone can have glorious consensus on it but without a transport protocol to take advantage of it it's not actually ever going to fly is there value in us suggesting it or should we just record it in the minutes here and yeah we've got we you know we've got john we've got uh cast and you know there's there's a bunch of chairs on this call uh hey lou is here great and and between us we can sort of keep it in our heads and discuss and and, and get it between us that's that's my question to the room but go ahead lou hello Hey, sorry about being late. Uh, yeah, I think this is a great topic. I'd love to see it discussed. Um, I, I think it's a uh, definitely a good transport issue, um, and you know, it, it it could be bubbled up even to making it into TCP, where TCP is aware of what the underlay can provide. Uh, and I don't. Uh, I, I think it's a, a would be great to get the transport area to talk about it. Uh, I don't think this has anything specific to raw. It's a general debt net problem. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter if uh, you're going over wireless or wired. The um, having your transport protocol be aware of what is under underneath is would be hugely val valuable. Um, there are protocols that I've seen uh, that have come through the IETF that go and try to measure uh, the available bandwidth or measure round trip time and then adjust themselves to those parameters. They're self-adjusting. And you know, if, if we could have an API up where the network could tell the application protocol, this is what you should expect, and sort of this is where you should self-tune, um, that would be great. And I, I actually think even TCP could take aware, take advantage of it, although you know, I, I, I'm more, I, I think like the uh, RTP stuff is probably a better place to be thinking, but, um, uh, or even something new. <laughs> Uh, but but they all could take advantage of it. So so I, I absolutely take your point and, and made a lot of sense there, Lou. Um, I think there's a difference between uh, what I'll call reactive transport protocols, where they they discover during their 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 operation that oh I you know the sliding window is is it reacts to things it finds. Uh, explicit congestion notification is still a mechanism to which the transport protocol can react. As I understand it. Um, Pascal is saying that, that that there should be a a um, a, a new protocol which is non-reactive. It it is told at connection establishment, if whatever that means, that uh, something has pre or some some control protocol that goes alongside the transport protocol has pre-agreed that this path that you will use will have these characteristics. Don't bother, don't bother adjusting. Don't react because it's this you've been told it's deterministically this and if you discover it's not there then drop into some sort of abort mode or does that sound draconian and unwieldy no i i, I think we're saying very similar things the mm. only difference in everything you said there is i don't think we need a new transport protocol i agree with everything that pascal said i agree with what you've just said a new transport protocol would be great uh, but i don't think we need one i think we could um uh, dovetail into the existing ones but a, a new one's also good um it's it's just the the difference is it's the uh, congestion control algorithm is is getting more is informed by something that the lower layer tells it uh, and and that's the, the difference and if it's a whole new protocol great but uh, yeah I, I don't think we have to say that it has to be a whole new There's protocol probably more to it Lou if you don't want the trans the transport needs to to know just in time that it's time to transmit the next thing so there's probably a need for uh, a tick coming from lower layer to say now it's time and it's yeah not, uh, i mean there's there's different ways to do control. that i mean you know the classic flow control mechanisms you, you have the 
uh, the sort of the pause based ones where you're told when you can send and what you've just described, I think is one of those. And then you have a credit based one. Uh, those, those are, you know, pretty, pretty classic um, uh, me mechanisms for when you can send. And um, I guess I'm saying something additional is, is that the application is told and then uh, or maybe it's the transport, maybe the transport layer is told and then it, it automatically adjusts and maybe there's some nice application API for that um, uh, socket API for it. Yeah, but and, and that can be one variation, I agree. I mean, one variation is, you know, the application doesn't know, but just pushes bytes just like TCP and then we will we'll block them until the period or, or uh, the application is aware effectively and we, we send him the we send the application the tick and then the application gives at the tick whatever it's there so so there are variations i mean but my point is um basically something needs to emulate what tsn is doing in all those uh, shapers and the, it can be effectively it it, it can be a, a, an asynchronous shaper or it can be a time-based shaper and this, these are the abstractions that are not really classical to to the current transport. So yes, you can twist and turn on something existing, but maybe looking more di directly um, the, the shaper of the transport to, to what we exist in TSN would probably be better. Yeah, I, I think the only point that we're disagreeing on is whether you need a new protocol or whether you can... Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I, yes, I don't want to answer that because, yeah, I, I don't know either. Uh, you, you can always twist something into something else. Uh, to which point? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I won't discuss that. Yeah, I, okay. I much prefer uh, trying to solve it at the uh, with the existing transport protocols because uh, applications are coded to pr transport protocols and it's really hard to get them to re be recoded. Uh, and middle, and middle boxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and I've seen some proxies out there like that you do that also. For the upper layer? And you could even make it look like UDP for the lower layer, but but you need to have a, a UDP on steroid in the middle to to as opposed to just send the things, you know, block the diagrams and 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 reorganize them in the, in the receive side. But it could we, it could be made to look like this, like UDP. Okay, I I, I have a left field suggestion, and then I'm going to let John speak because he's been very politely standing in the queue is this something that can be pushed back into quick because it's suddenly when you said oh you can make it look like udp on the on the wire for middle boxes uh, and of course quick does that explicitly to to work around middle box problems quick and i'm looking at others on this call to tell me where quick has got to with its explicit congestion notification or its non-explicit congestion notification mechanisms so i'm I, I, i'm solutioneering here what should we do about this? We're discussing it here. People have said, oh, yes, this is interesting, and there's there's some good debate. What action should we take? Go on, John. Um, yeah, I actually wanted to respond to a question you asked earlier, um, which was, this is very interesting. Should we try to capture it in our documents? Um, yes. And I thought that, Karsten had a fairly compelling point, which was, if you think that your architecture needs, you know, certain attributes from the lower or upper layers, you know, that you are in between, um, in order to be useful, probably you should write them down. Um, and, you know, sort of to your point that, you know, there's various chairs and ADs and so on in the room, um, you know, put not your faith in ADs or, or even chairs. Um, you know, if, if it's important, write it down. That's what I think. So John, I, I encourage you anyway, anybody can read my draft. I will try to find the name, but it's it's basically the only draft ever at TSVWG uh, with my name, right? And it's it, it says draft tuber TSVWG uh, that net whatever, and uh, so, so it's kind of easy to Google it. But the bottom line, if, if you could read it, then then for the next discussion, that I'll just browse through it. I, so, I, yeah. I have to lay down this problem in that draft. I, 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 I will take a look, but I was, I was also trying to respond to Rick's question about like, should should this go into uh, the architecture? And I thought that Karsten's point was good, which was, you know. Uh, I picked it, it. I mean, John, I will, I, will, I will act on that. That was already okay. checked. So okay, I so have both. a clue for next time to probably publish a new architecture with, you know, dependency on the upper layer. And, and I already, like Rick said, 
discuss a lot about the lower layers. And DeathNet discusses a lot about the lower layers. I mean, DeathNet, yes, and this is discussed at length. We inherit from DeathNet, we build over it, so we inherit all that as well. But the discussion about the upper layer and, and the um, what could happen over the UNI is, does not exist anywhere. So, so those are things what, that we can build in the future. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was about to say exactly the same thing. So, so, so thank you, John. I think having some commentary on this within the uh, architecture document was Carsten's point and was entirely valid. So, so the, great that there's an action there. Lou, I see you're in the queue. Um, yeah, I, I know. I, I was just going to say that um, rather than in the raw architecture document, I think it, this is worth even raising the visibility more and make it its own document and make it a DetNet document because it applies to DetNet equally. If it's in the raw architecture, it'll be buried there and people will think, oh, I only care about this if I'm doing wireless. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I, I think that's just <laughs> off base. You, you always care about it when you have a DetNet. Good point. Well made. So therefore, Pascal, rather than adding it to the architecture document, um, is it worth starting that document, just a, a draft zero zero, and we'll push it into DetNet and, and see how it picks up authors or, or whatever? Or are we, are we now creating work on your behalf? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I won't be working on that short, in short term, right? I'm in the middle of a big piece of code. Um, uh, actually, stopping is hard, and even for this meeting, that was hard. <laughs> but but um, that's why I created this document at TSV, because for me, since it was a transport product, I tried to document it to TSV WG. So, so I could I could republish it to that net, but maybe it was too much on the solution already, and maybe uh, it will require a prime statement first. Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever. Now, now the point so, that John made was if, if this architecture has dependencies, they should be written. Uh, I can have two sentences and say, hey, it's going to work if, if you know the input fits the shapers. There, there is an ingress shaper somewhere, and the input must fit that ingress shaper. I, I, don't I think that's a very valid statement. I think that needs to be in there, no matter right. whether another document it's exists. Freelance, right, but it's probably needed. And so I will add them. Um, Basically, that, that there's also a risk that there is an interaction between the shaper at the um, at the transport and, and whatever shaper would happen inside TSM. So, so hopefully not, but there might be there might be something which works more or less well depending on the type of shaper I use in both places. So, so I don't question. Need to do the same. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no problem. Quick, quick question to Lou. If Pascal was to, to dig out his expired draft that's in transport and just pushed it towards DetNet, warts and all, in, in, in the understandably not correct solutioneering, reads like a transport draft, would that have value and act as a, uh, a kickoff point for DetNet to really start to address this issue? Uh, or to, would it, Do you think that would be constructive or destructive to do? Um, I, I think if the right place for it is TSV working group, um, submit the document there um, and then uh, present it also in DetNet to get the right level of discussion and you know sort of cross pollination. But if the right place for the process to be run is 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 in TSV working group, uh, do it there. Um, uh, so uh, sorry, uh, let, I, me, I, let, let me rephrase. Um, I think the right place to 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 create a a transport solution which either interacts with with TCP or SCTP or, what, or whatever, or uh, is a whole new transport protocol. Yeah, absolutely, that's transport. But if there is a a a a, a problem statement that needs to be clearly defined as if you are using a DetNet, you need to be aware of these issues. Does that, if if we take the existing transport draft and just point it towards or introduce it to DetNet, will that help to 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 trigger the the generation of some uh, document that records 
hey, upper layers, to work well with debt net, you need to understand that you're on a debt net in some way. We, there is a there is a, a a gap here in in what IETF has for you to to use. I, I think it's really reasonable to have a debt net requirements document come out of debt net. Um, you, that part is just fine. Uh, you've said a couple of times of take this existing document with all its warts. I don't, yes. I don't remember. I, I believe I read the document, but I frankly don't remember it at all. So I can't remember if it's written as a requirements document or as a solution document. So a solution document would not be right to bring into T it, it, a TSV working group solution document does not belong in debt. Correct. So it, 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 yeah, I, if the answer is that, then the an you know, your answer to your question is no. If the, an if the answer to the question is what is this document, is, is it a requirements document, then the answer could be yes. So you know, I, I can't answer um, the specifics without looking at the document, but in principle, a requirements document, uh, requirements on transport protocols, or a, it's not even, it's, it may be consideration. I'm not sure it's even requirements. It's just, you know, hey, if transport protocol takes advantage of these things, you know, this is what DebtNet can do for you. Um, that seems like a great thing to do in, in DebtNet uh, and maybe make it a DebtNet raw document. Um, but if it's, if it's a solution document, uh, I think it should go into TSV working group and and then be talked about. And it's and it's perfectly fine to talk about it in that net. And those people that care about it will go contribute to TSV. Well, I'm sorry for me. I, I didn't write on it. I don't remember exactly what I put in it. So I can't even answer. I, I do remember there were two parts. One of them was really layer four and one was more layer two. And there was, I think my goal was to raise attention to that part. Um, but, but I don't know to which detail I went. Uh, I think it's mostly prime statement and architecture. I don't think I went into much detail about how it would work because I don't know <laughs> exactly how it would work. Pascal, uh, is this is the document I pasted? Is that the right the, the right one? Draft to bear TSVWG .net transport. Yeah. Okay, so it's it's in the chat, um, and I mean, just looking at your table of contents, like the first half of it looks. Yeah, like, you know, sort of high level requirements, problem statement, et cetera. But then like down toward the end of it, you've got things like, you know, specific messages. So it looks like it sort of slides into a solution by the end of the document. So here's, here's this for a suggestion. Pascal, why don't you just forward a link to that document to the DebtNet mailing list saying, Hey everyone, I think we have missed some considerations for the use of DebtNet that ought to be drawn out. Here is an here is an old document I wrote a while ago. The first half might be a suitable starting point for a document within DebtNet. The second half definitely a transport-based solution. And yeah. see what the reaction is within the group. I don't think DebtNet missed it because it was published, right? So, so it's more like the the priority was not to work on this. And so that network on, you know, making a dead network and that net network work. But now maybe it's a better time to, to think about those things now that that net has progressed that much. Luckily, so, we have a dead net chair on the call. What's your thought, Lou? I would actually be perfectly fine with uh, taking the document and sending it to dead net and then saying, hey, parts of it don't belong here or um, you know, Pascal, if you want to, if you want to look at it and strip out the parts that you don't think belong, go, you know, jump right there. But either way, it's a starting point. Uh, so I would, I would say, uh, just submit it. And if you want to send the mail saying you're going to submit it on when the doors open on Sunday, um, and would love to talk five minutes in the session, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a few minutes in the session. I think we have time. Um, you know, if you want to give like a literally a five minute intro of the topic and then get attract some uh, uh, people to it. So I think it would be great. I, I, I've been wanting to this work to get started in the IETF. Yeah. So uh, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty supportive of it. That's, that's neat. Uh, sadly, I'm not flying this time, Lou, and I just don't remember when that net is. I think it's in the afternoon, and it's it's a long week, and and I I won't be able to stay out of sleep for five days. So it might be London, <laughs> whatever. I, I can send it email, right? Say, oh, there was this document, and if you look at it, section blah, 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 maybe it's worth thinking again. Uh, and even raise kind of the question like we just did to get an open discussion. 
Uh, I'll try to attend that net, but if it's too late for me, it might very well be that I'm not there. Uh, Pascal, this is the advantage of the mailing list. I think you can just send it now while people start to ramp up to ITF. They're, they're starting to catch up with the mailing list thinking, oh, I better, better just see what's happening and watching it a bit more. Even if you can't attend the meeting, I think that might trigger the discussion. And um, someone else, uh, possibly Eve or myself or, or whatever, could, could raise it at the mic to say, by the way, Pascal, who unfortunately can't be here and time zones, etc., hey. put this onto the list, etc. So we can proxy for you by all means. So um, I have a second to do now. First to do was to put these two, three sentences about you know what expectation there are from the upper layer in the architecture. So that's row. And now I have a dead net to do, which is to post about this document and say, that you know, be don't look that too much at this piece, but okay, so second to do. Oh. That that would be fantastic, Pascal. Thank you, Lou. I I I know you have had comments on the list and some verbal comments with with Pascal and so on at uh at the various ITFs we've had while we've all been remote. Um, do you want to raise any of those now because the architecture document is so nearly ready? I think this is kind of last call for you to um it's not a last call officially but you know what i mean we're, we're heading rapidly towards last call on this document and there's a good chance to to raise any of those points and anyone else actually on this call yeah i'd, I'd love to but uh maybe the other people would go first i'm pulling it up anyway the comments up that's a deafening silence or my mic's failed <laughs> I don't know if we want to just jump into the archive, the message archive, which I'm still pulling up, to be fair. So I had sent some comments on uh, the list. I'm happy to talk through them. And in particular, there was a couple of sort of basic questions that would be good to get the folks to weigh in on. If, if there was anything where um you weren't particularly happy with the responses or Pascal wasn't or any of the author teams weren't particularly happy with with understanding the comments given we are now talking in real time I think that's the best use um if the if they were sort of yeah sure we can do that it's not a problem I don't think that because I'm watching the clock here it, but it's those ones that are a bit contentious given we we are in real time communication it's a good opportunity just to chew through those if you can highlight those first Sure, I'm trying to pull them up. The conclusion on one of the one of the parts was let's do an interim. Um, so I'm trying to find that one. <laughs> um, yeah. So there was the whole there was the discussion on the term raw. Uh, I'm not sure if that got how that got closed out. Um, but what was your point there? Wow, you really are making putting me on the spot. Thanks. Um, so I'm looking at the email from uh, March 20th um, that I sent, and then Pascal, if you can represent your responses, maybe that's the best way to to go through it. Um, so the, the first one was, what does the term raw refer to in the context of the architecture? Um, is it mechanisms? Uh, is it addition or is it extensions? Um, you know, is it, or is it just a terminology thing? Um, and uh, I found that in the document, it was unclear that it seemed to be a mix of something completely new and a, uh, something that's evolutionary. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I was expecting, um, sort of a, evolutionary and, you know, it builds on existing things and, and gives us a solution set and that's what raw is, but I didn't think it was clear in the document. That was point number one. So, you know, the first question fundamentally is what is raw in the, in the context of the architecture document?
And, and I'll give you what I, my expected answer. Oh, oh, go ahead. I I resent the because you had multiple points on that mail, and I resent at least some. I can try from them all, but some of the points to the to the list, hoping that someone would would answer. And I had I had the beginning of an answer myself. Uh, I was asking you if every charter is a prime, uh, if if that would contradict our charter, and so so that, uh, but because I agree with you, it it is depends on what we define by evolution, but um, I do think it's it's an evolution. It's it's a, a yeah, it's an addition to to that net. So, is it bad? I mean, do we have a prime? Do we have a, a, a charter issue if we? Talk about something evolutionary? Would that Why? be an issue? Just asking. No. And and about what is the term row? I had an answer to that. I didn't see anybody react to my answer. But effectively, depending on what we want this work group to become, is it is it a long-term activity like like that net itself? Or is it a one-shot activity about the PSC? Because this architecture is really about the OODA loop that enables the PSE. And if so, if it is so I'll because I'm watching the clock, I would say from my position, it is about more than uh, it's more than just the PSE. I would see the PSE is almost a, a, an output of the raw working group to say, hey, here is a PSE and a control plane to, to, to make that PSE work. The architecture document is should be looking at the bigger picture to say you know we need an OODA loop because things change and therefore we must react to well, that change we're saying that we're saying that but yeah um and you know that but but the OODA loop is, is so at, in my answer i was asking do we need to rename the document from raw architecture to raw OODA loop architecture or, or, or is this working group going to work on something very different for making wireless reliable and available in the future or something which will not have to do with this loop at all and then I, we might have a disconnect here also is because i don't see why OODA loop is unique to raw no it's not it's it exists everywhere i mean i picked a, a very non term for that uh, uh, right it, it's so just you that know the OODA loop OODA concept OODA is OODA equally OODA OODA. applicable to that Mac. oh it could effectively i mean what we provide in here could be used in wa all wire. It's just that it's designed because of primes which are specific to wireless. But if for some reason the solution is beneficial on wire only, why not? So I, I think we're cool. mixing solution with um, with architecture, and I, I you know, agree very much with what Rick was saying a moment ago is you know solutions psc is a solution um the architecture shouldn't be nailing you down to a solution OODA loop is a concept that's applicable equally applicable the wireless pieces are not covered in the general raw architecture so that's i mean sorry detnet architecture so that's what the raw architecture in my opinion is, is all about and it's a i view I, I always thought and i think it's actually what the group is chartered to do is to um add to the existing technology set uh, like uh, DetNet and traffic engineering, and say this is how we apply it in the in the wireless network. That that's sort of what I think raw is. Um, yes. And, you know, I, I, I whatever the group considers it is what the group considers it. We just have to be really clear. So, just my two pennies worth. Um, I believe. Given the, the current charter is pretty explicit about working on uh, probably the Pario and the PSE solution to uh, the the um, the raw problem as it exists at the moment, the problem of getting determinism over wireless links. And, and OODA is a fairly general way of solving the fact that, yeah, things change, so we need to react to the change. OODA is a fairly sensible concept to use that. And yes, it is applicable in many other places rather than just raw. Address, I think we may charter one or two more times to solve the problem for, you know, the Pario P PSE and some of those approaches. If there is a whole new way to solve this problem, I think 
that would probably result in a different working group, probably the same attendees, but we could come up with a, a new exciting acronym and approach it something different in, in a different way. Okay, Obviously, so ADs know, and the IESG would get the final determination on that, but I don't think we should worry about what could happen about future things that are outside of the current charter. Okay, so, so, so now we have an answer to Lou, because the, the architecture defines what row is. And so the, the document is called the row architecture, and, and row is what this architecture says. And now, if, if we don't agree that it does everything, or if it has things which we don't agree should be in there, then we, we message it. But by definition, I would say row is this architecture. Row is so whatever implements this architecture. Um, Lou, does that, it, do you not agree with that? I, I don't know what that translates in terms of text. So is it something new and independent, or is it something that builds on uh, what the IETF has done in debt net and traffic engineering? The architecture, which is a row, describes that and says very explicitly that it builds on debt net. And uh, that your term evolution is probably what is intended. I just wanted to make sure that I understand it correctly. But, but yes, it's, the architecture is very clear that it, it builds on that net and extends that net. Okay, so we, we should just make sure that the new text does. I think there's some wordsmithing opportunity in the last thing you sent to the uh, group in the interest of time. I think we should move on. I don't know how long we're scheduled for. <laughs> well, we're, we were scheduled for an hour. So um, we are already over time. Lou, when it comes to wordsmithing, can I ask you to suggest some text because Pascal is already picking up actions out of this, and sure. uh, I know he has co-authors, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll do it on the list. Busy. Could we it take it to the list? Um, I'm I'm going to draw a line in the sand because I'm already late for my next engagement, and it's quite late on a Friday for those of us in Europe already. Um, Thank you very much for your attendance, everyone. There are notes. Please go through and check to see whether the notes in HedgeDoc do actually match your um, recollection of what, what we have discussed. I think it was productive, if slightly unstructured, and I apologize for it being unstructured. Um, and I look forward to seeing as many of you in person as I can at IETF 114. <laughs> and those I don't see, I'll either speak to or miss you deeply and hopefully catch you in the next one. Okay. So uh, unless anyone has any final parting shots, I'm going I have to a quick, I have a quick one. Go on. Um, are the people on the call interested in, in organizing an informal um, sort of session with whoever's there plus Pascal and whoever's not there? I will attend one if you have one. Uh, I think it has value. Oh, I was going to say, I'll attend it if you set it up, Rick. But yeah, let's. We'll, we'll, I'll coordinate. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll kick something off on uh, the working group list. So let's open. Yep. Call. Yeah, and we'll find a time which works for Pascal, uh, and we will exactly. dial him in in some way while we sit and drink tea at him or something. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. That makes okay. sense. Okay. Can you sing not to be with you guys? I mean, stupid, but I don't have a hold on that one. So. Not a problem. There will be, hopefully London will be a bit easier for you, Pascal. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for your attendance, guys. And I will see some of you soon and some of you uh, later on. Thank you. And I'm going to shut the meeting. Yeah. Although I think it closes itself. I don't know how, I don't know how we close it. I think we just let it roll for a bit. I'm, I'm just going to let it roll. <laughs>